<laughs> What's cracking, big dogs? We just heard the brand new spanking hot off the press news. OBJ is officially traded. I apologize for the lag and my <laughs> delay in my voice right now, but we just need to hear the fire from Snacks. Um, OBJ is officially no longer a New York Giant. He's been traded to the Cleveland Browns in exchange for a first-round pick, which is 17th overall, a third-round pick, which is 95th overall, and Jabril, hometown New Jersey kid, Peppers. Steak and Peppers. Snacks. Listen, people are tweeting at me. They're like, is this kid alive? Is Snacks going to kill himself? You seem a little bit more chipper than I'd imagine. You wanted OBJ out. I... I did. Um, so I'm actually ecstatic. I've gotten, I was just telling you like 1700 text messages. I see, I see all the tweets, people. I see them. I'm very well and good. I'm, I'm drinking. Like I'm happy. Life's good. Listen, that sounds like fake enthusiasm. No, it's not. Nick. It's really not. Okay. Think about it. That was Think the worst it. fucking move by a GM I've ever seen. You guys just signed into a five year, $90 million contract, $20 million in fucking a signing bonus. Listen, Listen, you see this? I touch this before I leave my room every day. I touch it, okay? Every single day, I touch it. We still have pretty good wide receiver, too, okay? Sterling Shepard, listen. Sterling Shepard's going to get the job done. Eh, he'll be fine. <laughs> what are you going to get for a star wide receiver? I, that's You get a starting safety. You get a first-round pick and a third-round pick. Antonio Brown just got a third and a fifth. Okay? Because he so needed... Because he needed... I, I get it, I get it. There, where there was smoke, there was fire. Clearly, clearly this team is in complete rebuild mode. So what do you do? You tear it down. You tear it But it, But it's not like OBJ is old. OBJ is – he, he's the cornerstone of that franchise right now. No, Saquon is. Put him – yeah, true. I, whatever. He's it, it doesn't move the needle. You need OBJ on the fucking side. If they bring in Haskins, that kills his development. Why does it kill it? Because he needs playmakers like him to fucking boost his confidence, to have guys that are there when he can't make the throws, to have guys that he trusts to make plays for him. Well, I think he has three playmakers on the team, on the field. He has one, and two of them are questionable, if you're going to say fucking Ingram and Shepard. Okay, maybe they're not playmakers, all-world talent like OBJ, and I agree with that. He would have helped develop whoever, whatever quarterback comes in here. He would help their development twice as much. However, this team literally, and I shit you not, has 14 holes on their team. Yeah. So... In a, in a defensive field draft, why not get two more picks, especially a first-round pick if you're going to use number six or have to trade up to get your quarterback, which is far and away more important than a wide receiver. Okay, okay. Listen, I, I get it. It's crazy. He's literally a generational talent. He probably, I mean, in my opinion, he is the best wide receiver in football. So it's not. Can't argue it. It's not an easy thing to say. In his prime, oh, it, just make, it just makes, it just makes, I don't know. Like, I, I think, I don't know. It, it baffles my mind just the amount of horrible decisions that Dave Gettleman has made over the last couple of years. I mean, the last, like, the the time he's Two been. Two days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, like, I couldn't agree more. He's been an atrocious GM. He's living in the era of, like, 1990, where he just wants to run the football 400 so, times a game. What are your expectations for the Giants 2019? Three wins. Maybe Three. four. God damn it. I honestly thought you were going to say Super Bowl or bust. <laughs> Come on. Come on. No, I just thought you were going to be dick. All right, let's talk fantasy, though. Let's talk fantasy. This moves. Uh, anyways, y'all see my shirt? I thought it was fucking fitting. Y'all see mine? What the fuck is that? It's not even this, a thing. This is a sweater I wore to work today when everything was calm. <laughs> Before when everything was calm. There's going to be a lot of red wine spilled on that tonight. All oh, right. You wait. All right. OBJ moves over to Cleveland. This Cleveland offense is fucking rocking now, right? Yeah. So they got OBJ. They got Jarvis. They got David Njoku. They got Nick Chubb. And most importantly, Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield graded out eighth overall per PFF as the, the eighth best quarterback in the league last year. Set the rookie record for most touchdown passes. Now, he was someone like, as of right now, I had him probably ranked quarterback 12 to 15 only because we didn't see them actually add weapons to the team. I am as sold on Baker as a talent as I am on any quarterback in the league right now. So them getting OBJ puts him in ease. Okay, so I'm going to name some names for you. Baker Baker or Drew Brees? Baker. Yeah, 100%. Baker or Russell Wilson? Baker. I'm going to take Baker too because the volume is there. Uh, yeah, there are not I'm a lot there, of... And the, and the, the Seattle's a running team. Yeah, there, there's, there's not a lot of guys that I would take over Baker Mayfield. I think the list goes Patrick Mahomes, Andrew Luck, Aaron Rodgers. Um, 
who's after that? I'm probably missing a couple top quarterbacks now. Am I crazy if I'm taking – I'm very close to taking Baker over – no. I was going to say Luck, but – no, I, th- I think that line is only going to get better, and, and I, I think they're going to keep gonna adding get pieces. It is going to get better, but I saw what was what the last four games he wasn't. Yeah, they do want to get they, that run. They really had a philosophy. They were running that football. They, they want to get the ground game. Yeah, you're right. They want to get the ground game going. I, I would still take luck, um, but I don't think. You, you, but it's not a far off like a crazy question for you to ask. No, it's not out of the realm of possibility. No. Okay. So Baker is up there in a top five quarterback discussion for sure. Um, absolutely. OBJ, what does this do for you? So the question for, I was more concerned about his health. I thought as long as he was on the field, he was going to produce. Now I think, you know, his ceiling is the roof. His, his ceiling is the roof. I set you up for that so beautifully every time. I love you. You do it every time. Um, and I, it's unbeknownst to me. Like I do it completely on accident too. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, okay. So OBJ was like arguably, you know, could have been the wide receiver one if he was healthy. Now his ceiling, if, without it being the roof, <laughs> is through the roof. At like, I, I like where where are you drafting him now? Because I had him probably at like wide receiver eight if he was going to be in New York still. You know, um, yeah, oh, this this changes everything. It it, it does. I, he goes so far up that wide receiver ranking board. I'm tr- I'm trying to think. We have I mean, I, who do you who, Hopkins? Hopkins, I would take over him. Uh, Dude, I'm not I, I think Mike he Thomas over him anymore. No, no way. Uh, I would I would put OBJ probably back in. I'm r- unbelievably high on Juju. He Juju is my five. I would put OBJ over him at five. I have Hopkins, Devontae Adams, Julio Jones, and Tyree Kill at four. I, I... <clears throat> Bro, I, I take I take OBJ over over Julio and Hill right now. You would take him over Julio. I think he's three. I would put Hopkins, Adams. I, I almost think you can argue him over Adams. Him over Adams. I think you can argue it too. I'm. I probably will be a little bit more risk averse, just because I don't. I, I just think that the injury risk is a very real thing for Odell. We've seen him miss it's a lot huge. of time. And that's. I, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Out of all the texts and, and everything I'm receiving, they're like, "How could you possibly like it?" I'm like, "Listen, the compensation may not. You know, it may not warrant the guy." Fine, I, I can understand that argument, but we're also talking about a guy. Literally, every single year of his career has missed four plus games, but yeah. one year. I mean, that injury history is there. They're not fluke injuries. They're not a pulled hamstring for two weeks. He cracked his ankle. He cracked his leg. Yeah, they're they're they're, re- they're real shit. So I'm a little. That's why, like I like I I don't think I would take Odell over Julio just for the fact that Julio's gone 1,400 yards like 19 straight years. So it's like you yes, know exactly what you're gonna get. yeah. The upside is there, but I'd probably rather play it safe because at the end of the day, like the the elite running backs are the ones that really win you your fantasy leagues. Uh, I mean, the, obviously the top wide receivers do it too, but like I'd rather be a little less, uh, a little less risky with the wide receivers. So for Jarvis Landry, this for me, this like really, really makes him unattractive because last year, last year he was the only fucking. I, I was writing down some stats right before we got on. He had 81 catches. He was the only player with over 80 catches that went under 100 yard, uh, under 1,000 yards. Yeah, yes. Last year, he, he set the record for the most receptions. I think he had 112 receptions, led the NFL, and still went under 1,000 yards. So with OBJ there, like the, it, if Jarvis couldn't get it done last year as like the clear-cut number one with no one else there, Jarvis Landry is like a – he's a wide receiver three that you don't even want to take pretty much. He's- he, yeah, he's going to be playing flex spots for for guys on by. I'm not. There's nothing that intrigues me about Jarvis Landry at no. all. So don't get. I cute, mean, like, don't get good cute there. Possession receiver. He's nice to have on your team. He's definitely going to compliment Beckham well, but for fantasy value purposes, doesn't do it for me. That's what there's I was going to say. There's it, nothing there. Much better real life. Like this, he's going to make the team very smooth on offense, but definitely right. not someone I want in fantasy. Right. This this becomes interesting for Njoku because Njoku was like a possible third year breakout candidate, and he was someone that like you know if you missed on the first like four or five guys, you could still be like oh you know pretty happy about having Njoku as in your lineup as opposed to like Jared Cook or some shit. Um, yeah. With this for me, it it definitely doesn't help. If anything, it makes it probably a, a little more volatile. Like I I, I say yeah. that we'll have more like weeks where he hits his floor rather than hitting like a you know a four for 60 week or a four for 50 yeah. week which is like shitty but still okay in your lineup so like in joku this this hurts his value for you i absolutely hurts it he was i actually thought of him before i thought of jarvis which is kind of sad because i mean jarvis is pretty yeah pretty uh pretty big name and i thought in the joku because i did think he was going to take that next step this year with baker yeah now it's like i brought him i brought him down a little bit and the tight end position is not strong so you 
you will feel okay putting him in there. Yeah. But you know you're not getting the home run every week and but, the consistency that you probably want. Yeah, but on the inverse, what it does is probably flip Njoku and Ingram in the rankings. Now you could be a lot more confident in Ingram because he could be similar to like what Jared Cook was in Oakland last year. He was like one of the only field stretchers, one of the only weapons on that team. So Ingram right. Ingram becomes interesting and probably, I mean, he'll vault Njoku at, I think I had him at tight end eight and Njoku as seven possibly. So he'll he'll go up there. And then it, it becomes a battle between Ebron and Ingram, and I'll probably I'll probably take I'll probably take Ingram over Ebron on draft day. I'm taking I'm taking Ingram too. I I don't know the stats in front of me because this is like impromptu. I just came on, just downloaded Skype and yeah. came on. <laughs> Commitment, look at, baby. Look, that's it. Look at Ingram's stats without OBJ. He, I'm he, fairly certain that they're pretty damn good. He had a monster stretch down the year, uh, down down the last four games of, of the year last year. I think it was the last four or five games. He was like five for seventy five at minimum yeah, in every game, and he was going off. I was like, yeah, there's some real chemistry there. So like, if OBJ is gone, who else does Eli trust in that offense? And come to the point, like Ster- Sterling Shepard. Now, do you take a guy like Sterling Shepard over Jarvis Landry? Oh yeah, I yeah. do. You like Shep? I think I think Shepard's a great football player. I yeah. Mean, you know, overall, I think he's great. Shepard, so I, I definitely am taking him over him, but Shepard, uh, yeah, he's someone that can get it done just based off volume. And Shepard's kind of like a guy, like uh, I was saying yesterday, he, he kind of reminds me of of Juju because he's not like really small, but he could play inside, he could play outside, and he's also yeah. in a sense like Calvin Ridley, how they were both both old prospects coming into the league, so they were a lot more refined than the younger prospects. Like, oh, they have a lot more upside, but he's a, a crispy route runner. So he's someone right. that, that Eli will be able to um, will be able to lean on. What does this mean for Saquon? Like, I, I think it hurts his efficiency, but his volume's got to be all the way up. His volume's going to be ridiculous. Absurd. He might not be playing football after, like, year five because of how many touches he's, he's going to have. Do you think he breaks Christian McCaffrey's receiving record from this year? I think... I don't think there's a doubt. Really? I mean, like, I first of all, dump off Eli is well in effect now. Just yeah. imagine without Odell, like, it's going to be twice as much. Yeah. It, it, Saquon doesn't change for me. He's still one-on-one for me. Like, I'm not yeah. taking him off there. He was he was still awesome when OBJ missed the last five, six, whatever games he missed this year. So, I'm try, not st- uh, Try to uh, stop moving around a bit. You look like the fucking Joker in Batman, like, when he's, like, fucking riding through <laughs> the city. Yeah. You're about to give me an asthma attack. Bro, do you know what just fucking happened to me? I'm sorry. I'm I trying. know. <laughs> You're traumatized right now. I'm trying. This is wild, bro. Holy shit. Um, this is wild. This is, this, is the, gotta be, is this the biggest trade in NFL history? Very well might be. Um, like, think about it. There's not there. Yeah, trading has just become like a popular thing, I feel like, very I, I recently. Insane. The Giants made two huge trades in like three days. Yeah. So... What what else do we have from this trade? Anything fantasy relevant? Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb. I don't think this really impacts him at all, to be honest. I don't either. I just I, I, I like the fact that 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 offense is going to be so spread, mm-hmm. so wide open. Like that, yeah. Chubb Chubb still remains like in my in my top ten. Or oh, easily I got Chubby there. For Chubb. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, keep, I'm I'm keeping him for like the eleventh round pick, so I'm 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 ecstatic. I love it. Okay, so quick recap: we have the stock market. We have Eli. Uh, Eli was not even in mention. I'm sorry. Uh, Sterling Shepard up. Evan Ingram up. Saquon Barkley was at the top, and he's not getting off the top. OBJ up. Jarvis Landry down. David Njoku down. Obviously, this kills a guy like Antonio Callaway. Uh, Nick Chubb, neutral, still very good. Baker Mayfield. Whoop! 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 The pants are tight, as Wade, as crazy Wade would like to say. (laughs) Yeah. All over Baker. I can't believe it. Um, Yep. Just, you know what? Outside of like this... The Browns, man, they're like, they're legit. This dude, is crazy. Dude, I w- imagine how, you got to be so OBJ. pumped as a fucking Browns fan. Good for them. Yeah, they, they honestly earned it after fucking 42 straight busts in the first round. Now, I should deserve something too, right? As a Giants fan, it's been pretty tough. I, You know what? Listen, like I said, Eli would never have those rings without OBJ. You know, I'm going to refrain from even even answering <laughs> anything to that because you make no sense ever. All I do is make sense. All I do is make big facts. It's the only thing that hatches out of me. All right, that's going to wrap up the quick improv video. We just wanted to be 
breaking first on the YouTube scene, letting you know what's going down. So if you have any questions, we kind of I want to know where you guys have OBJ ranked in your rankings after this trade and why. So drop a comment down below where you got OBJ. Who who's moving up and down the stock market? Make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new. We're covering everything 2019 fantasy football. Football. Seven hours of commercial free football. We ain't gonna hear that shit for like six months. Football. All right. Well, we... I had a lot of fun. Thank you for letting me do this, Nick. And um, wow, this wow. is crazy. Yeah, this make crazy. make sure you go follow us on Twitter. Bye.